Hello, everybody, and welcome to the United Stand. Uh, we've, uh, we're joined by a United legend here, Teddy Sheringham. Um, everybody knows who Teddy is. It's great to have you on the show. Teddy, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, yeah, not, not too bad. Um, um, all the better for having you on. You know, if you don't know who Teddy Sheringham is, you're not a Manchester United fan. Just remember that treble win inside, that night over in the new Camp. And uh, we've got Teddy on just to, to have a chat about, well, Solskjaer's the manager. Teddy scored that goal that night as well. So a bit of a chat about Manchester United and where they're at in this summer and where we're going to move forward. Um, it would be wrong of me not to start off talking about the summer because it's the transfer window. United have got Jaden Sancho in. Um, what, what, what's your thoughts on United's uh, acquisition of Jaden Sancho? Because I think last time we spoke, you were, you, you were talking about a striker. Do you think that with Cavani staying now and Sancho in, United can probably wait a bit, or, or, or do you still think that's an area that we should be looking at? Um, well, I don't know. First and foremost, there's so much football on television recently over the last couple of years because of the coronavirus. I've not watched a lot of the German football, so I don't know so much about Sancho. I've seen a little bit when he's played for England. I know he's very dynamic. The Germans speak very well of him over there. So, first of all, I think that's a great acquisition. He's an, he's an out-and-out right winger as well, isn't he? So, you know, that fills that space where I think United have, have looked to fill that space. You know, Rashford's played there. Greenwood's played there. I think a few players have had a go at playing out there, but they're not actual na natural right wingers. So um, I think I think that's a that's a good signing. Um, as for the centre forward, uh, I really like Cavani. I think the the fact that they've signed him again, um, I know he's another year older, but he's a he's a class act, and you get the ball in the middle for him, and and he'll score goals. So uh, I don't think he needs to be running about all over the place anymore. I think if he if he stays between the the 18 yard lines, the width of the box they call it, and uh, he'll be all right. He'll score goals still. Yeah, I think we, when we last spoke a couple of months ago, when we were doing that uh, thing up in Manchester, it was just about the time that Harry Kane had announced that he was going to leave Spurs. Um, obviously, we're a couple of months later on from that now, um, and it feels like with Cavani now staying for another year, it's almost like United. Have given themselves a year's time to do to, to get a, a striker in. Do you see Harry Kane moving this summer, or do you think that that might still be an option in a year's time? Because obviously you've got those Spurs connections and United connections. I'd, I'd be very surprised if he doesn't move straight after the Euros. After what what he said when he came out, you know, he's uh, you know, if he hasn't got some sort of deal with Levy, I'd be very surprised. Because for him to come out and say what he said and then still be at Tottenham next year, I think that would be... I, I, I'm, I just can't see that happening. So if it does, it might work in, in Man United's favour because he's, he's obviously talked about playing with De Bruyne, going to Man City, that would be. Um, and that would make them phenomenal for me for the next four or five years. Whereas if he does have to stay at Tottenham, and Cavani sees out the next year and does well again for them this year. That that might work in their Man United's favour for Harry Kane to go to Man United then, because Man City need a centre forward now with Aguero leaving. Um, so uh, we'll have to wait and see, really. But I would be very surprised if he's still at Tottenham at the, yeah. at the start. It looks like it's just been a case of timing, isn't it? I think in a year's time, United might have, might have had a say in that. But yeah, you're right. It's like he has been quite public about what he wants to do. And with Spurs, I mean, I'm not massively impressed with what Spurs have done with their manager. So it's, if you're Harry Kane and you're ambitious, you're like looking at that and going, that's another year of uncertainty, isn't it? So we'll see what happens with that. Um, bringing it back to United, though, Paul Pogba, um, we're now, uh, he's got one year left on his deal. Mike's on a new contract at United. There's talk of PSG. Um, what, what's your thoughts on that situation with Paul Pogba with a year to go? He's been here for five years. Um, you know, fantastic talent, but he didn't play in the midfield a lot last season. We were using McTominay and Fred. There's links to other players. He was out on the left-hand side. Do you think it's time for, you know, not, not necessarily in a bad way, time for you know, Man United and Pogba to part ways? Or do you think he's so important that, you know, you want him to be uh, signing a new deal? Well, it's a, it's a funny situation, isn't it? He's got a year to go. He could go on a free at the end of that year and go and get himself absolute fortunes, as if they don't earn enough money already now. Uh, I think if they got if 
Man United or if Oli got vibes that that's what he was going to do, I'm sure he would try and sell him now and try and get as much money as he could for him now. Uh, whether that's the right thing or the wrong thing to do, you know, you, you, look at, you look at top players and you've just mentioned about that he hasn't been playing in midfield, he's sometimes being left out. If you're a top player, you don't get left out. You know, it's as simple as that. You know, if, if you are that good, you don't get left out. You know, you mentioned Harry Kane earlier. We we're talking about England. He wasn't going through the best of periods at the start of the tournament, but you can't leave him out because he's a class player. He's a world-class player. He's the best in his position. So, you know, when you look at Pogba, is he, is he worth that much? Without a doubt, he's a talented boy. You don't have to look at the goal he scored in, in, the, in the Euros recently. Um, but, you know, there's always question marks there. I think there's been question marks for the last four years. He's been there five years and there's been question marks for four years. You know, do we need him? Shall we get rid of him? Shall we get as much money as we can for him? I don't, I don't think you can keep having that conversation every time Pogba's mentioned. You know, you're either... I know you can't please everyone and you're not everybody's favourite, but you've got to be 80% of the supporters or the, the hierarchy for, for you to to be a top player. And um, I don't think that's the case. So if you could uh, get as much money for him now, um, I would, I would, you know, as long as you're getting replacements, you're, you're getting decent money to uh, get, get some money in for him and, and, and wash your hands with the situation. Yeah, I think one of the, one of the things I wanted to follow up on that with you is, as, as somebody who's played at the very highest level for club and country, one of the things that gets said about Pogba is that if you look at the five years, did United ever provide him with the players around him that maybe France does? Is that an excuse for a top level footballer? Obviously, you've played at the top level. If you go, if you if you'd not come and played for United and you'd gone and played for maybe like Leicester, you know, you would be a, a big Leicester's best player with all due respect. You would be. Um, would you expect Teddy Sheringham still to be able to shine as a player? I mean, you wouldn't win the same things at United, but is it is it is that a fair excuse for Pogba to say, look, you know, I've not really had the players around me like I do for France, or would you still expect more consistency from that? I, th I think good players excel in every team they play in. Um, they 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 make the right decisions at the right time for for them to be classed as, as a top player. It's as simple as that, whoever you're playing for. That's, that's how you get to plan for the top clubs. That's how you get to plan for England. You know, I played for a lot of clubs before I played for United and a lot of clubs before I played for England. You know, you have to show your worth all the way through. And, you know, you have people looking around you thinking, I want him in my team. You know, he's a, he's a proper player. And I wonder sometimes where, you know, with players... At United, he might be saying, "Oh well, I haven't got the players around me." But at the same time, players around him might be looking and going, "Is he really a top player?" Um, I'm not so sure. You know, he's decent. He's got qualities. Does he really dig in when we're when we're struggling and it's all not flowing well for us? Do you know? Do in the old terms, do, do you want him in the trenches with you when when the time when the tough get when the tough get going? And um, I'm not so sure the answer would be yes for for the majority of the of the team. Interesting. And um, in, when you look at that current team, as um, as a, um, yourself, what's what, what 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 one player really? If you were in the trenches, not not necessarily in the trenches. I suppose that's a bad uh, bad thing because you know you probably pick Harry Maguire. But but like, what's the player for you that you look at United and, and is their most valuable player? You know that that's the player that this team is that absolutely needs. You know, you can't, unsellable. What what is that player? Because some people would think it is a Pogba, but who, who would it be for you? Um, well, when when I talk about in the trenches, I don't I don't you know it's not all about flying into tackles and showing how hard you are and, you know, doing, doing certain stuff. I mean, there's, there's being in the trenches in the footballing terms is, is he still going to get on the ball when times are tough? Does he still want the ball? You know, you talk about Skulls, you know, a Keane, a Beckham, mm -hmm. a Keane in the old days. When the time, when the, when the going got tough, they wanted the ball. They, they still had belief. They wanted to drive Man United on. So, 
I look at, you know, there's different aspects of, of, every, of every way of, of being one that you want alongside you, that you can depend on. Um, who do I look at in the Man United team? I like Fernandez. keep getting on the ball, you know, even when times were, were, were tough. Um, I really like Mason Greenwood. Uh, I think he's going to be a sensational player. And I think, you know, given another year with Cavani in the, at the club, uh, I don't know an awful, awful lot about Mason Greenwood. I haven't seen him a lot as centre forward, but he scores goals, you know, naturally. And, and very, you know, he scores a lot of them as well. So, I would, you know, they might be lining him up to, to bring him al alongside Cavani or, or when, he, when he's played too many games throughout the season, you, you, know, you might put him in there and then, you know, he might blossom by the end of next season. So, there's your centre forward with it as a class act to uh, come in straight after that next season. So, that type of play, you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I don't think our viewers will be too unhappy with you saying Bruno and Greenwood. To be fair, um, to talk to me about Solskjaer a little bit. I mean, look, you know, for me, ninety nine. I've said this to you before that that goal that you scored. I mean, Solskjaer gets all the credit for winning it, but it was so close together, and the goal you scored. And I think unless people lived it, they don't understand it when I say the Sheringham goal for me was more of a release because it's very hard to go from one minute to another. And still have the same thing. And I thought that was it. You know, I, I was sat in a room with people who were like, you find out who your real United fan is. They're talking about where we're going next. And there's two or three of us just like, what you want about? This is the, tre the treble is going to go. And then you score and it's like, you know, I'm getting goosebumps now. But you and Solskjaer will always be um, symbolic of that night because you scored the goals. You both started on the bench as well. Solskjaer's in charge now. Um, I, I suppose it's two questions in one. Did you ever think that Solskjaer would end up where he is as a United leader and manager like that? And going into year three, what are you expecting from Oli this year? Because people are saying it's sink or swim, really. You've, you know, after three years, you've got to you've got to be delivering, you know, either a good title chase or a trophy. Well, first and foremost, I, I didn't think Oli would be a manager. Now he is the he is the loveliest man I think I've ever met in football. Is a lovely family, lovely kids, just the whole scenario as a <clears throat> as a family man, you couldn't get any better. So for him to be a manager, I, I didn't think he would be hard enough um, to make those tough calls. But I think he's been outstanding. I think, you know, it, it takes a little while for you to get your impressions on a, on a football team. I think, you know, I've, I've had a little go at the lower levels and, and I think you have to get past that first six months, eight months, 10 months period. You have to have a little bit of luck with injuries along the way and results that, you know, don't, couldn't always go your way, but you nick them and it doesn't make the whole scenario look not so bad. Um, I think he's had a tough time, but I, I think he's, I think he's doing great. And he's now, he's coming into that third year. And you're right, he needs to produce. He's, he's got close a couple of times, but they need to, they need to start winning again uh, at United because, because that's what everybody expects. He knows that more than anyone from the, from the period that he played in. And he will expect to go out and win something this year. And I think that's a good thing that, that he expects that because... Um, if you didn't, if you're coming in there to do OK again as a new manager and, and get your point of view across, you know, that, that might take another two or three years. I think the way he has dealt with things along the way, I think he's doing a great job and uh, long may it continue. When you look at United, do you think it is just a matter of time and, you know, having to right the wrongs of the past? Or is there is there anything that you look at it and you go, they're just missing that, you know, maybe maybe the style of play, maybe a couple of players, or do you just think it's, you know, time? Well, no, they, they need to up their game, which is why they're buying Sancho. You know, you, when you look at Manchester City, I think, I think Pep Guardiola has taken the game to a whole new level in this country. And I, and I think it's fantastic for uh, the Premier League. But it also tests Liverpool. Hold on a minute. Can you hear her in the background? No, that'd be right? fine. It'd be fine. It'd be fine. We've got, to, we've got Teddy sharing on the show. It's fine. <laughs> I can't believe a three-year-old can make this much noise when when you tell her not to. No, that's, that's always that's always. I, I think something goes off in their head where they do it on purpose. <laughs> Sorry, where, where, where did I get to there? 
Yeah, you were just saying about Pep and you know what United need to do to sort of get to that level, really. Yeah, United need to you need to up their game a little bit more because Pep's taken the game to a whole new level. It's, it's as simple as that. He's uh, he's took those levels up. Liverpool are trying to catch him. They they did for a year, but Manchester City have responded again. So Manchester United need to get in that mix. They need to they need to be twenty percent better than they were last year. I know they finished second, but it was way off first. Um, they, they need to get better. Simple as that. And I think um, they've made that one acquisition in the summer. I think they, they might even need to, to make one or two more as well, without a doubt, if they're going to if they're gonna catch Manchester City. Yeah, yeah, totally fair. And um, one, one, one final thing I wanted to ask you as well is, and I'm, I'm going to do it as a top three, who are the top three players you played with at Manchester United in the time that you were there? Because you played with some absolute, well, legends of the club. Oh, that is a tough question. Uh, it's a tough question because uh, when people used to ask me when I played for England, who would win out of England and, and Man United? And at the time, I, I kind of said, well, probably Man United because we had... Flicking through them, we had the we had the best Danish player, we had the best Welsh player, we had the two best Irish players, we had the best Dutch player, we had the best Trinidadian, we had some of the best English players. You know that all over the pitch, it was like, oh my God, it's the top players from all over the place. Norwegians, the top Norwegian players playing for us. You know, it, all over the pitch, we had top players. So to ask me to to name three is tough, but I'll have a go. <laughs> uh, Yapstam in third place because I just thought he was a colossus as a centre half. You know, you in in those times you used to play against some very very good centre forwards, and he he was quick, strong, read the game very well, um, and he just he used to run along with his strength, holding off players, even carrying them sometimes. It looked like. And then just nicking the ball off him and laying it back to the keeper and just doing it with ease. He w he was a sensational centre half. Uh, in second place, Scolzi. I think um, Scolzi was phenomenal. Um, when you get the best players in the world naming him as the best player that they've ever played against, and you know the old Spanish boys. Iniesta, Xavi, talking about how good Skulls was. I, I, I complain with that because he was uh, phenomenal. Uh, great player to play with. I had a lovely understanding with him as well. Uh, where he wanted the ball, I could lay it off for him. And, you know, he used to pass nice passes into me. So uh, he would be number two. But my leader would be our leader, Roy Keane. If, if he wasn't playing... We weren't with all those great players that that I've just mentioned. If he wasn't playing, we weren't the same team, and the and the form dipped by ten percent because of the leader leadership qualities that Roy Keane had. He made made us a better team when he played. Um, not the most not the cleverest player on the pitch, not the most skillful, but his desire to win drove us on and made sure that we all played to our potential. Love it. Love to hear it. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's always brilliant when you get someone like yourself who's won things with United and they say things that, you know, I, I look at from outside and go, oh, I wonder if I wonder if that's how it works. And I like the Yapstam one because I think he's understated. I think he's one of those players that, you know, was fantastic at the time, but probably doesn't get the mentions he deserves 20, 30 years later. So, no, absolutely fantastic. And absolutely fantastic to have you on the show, Teddy. It's been a real, real pleasure. So thank you very much for coming on. No worries. Nice to speak to you. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, we've got more of this to come. Smash a like on the video and we'll speak to you all soon.